The Crane 4 is finally here and it's a powerhouse of a gimbal. So a few years ago now, Zion released the very popular Crane 3S, but weighing in at almost two and a half kilos, and once a heavy payload was attached, you needed some pretty good upper body strength to carry it and operate it. But it could handle a whopping 6.5 kilo payload, which is nuts for a relatively small professional gimbal. Well, things have gotten even smaller and lighter with the Crane 4, weighing in at 1.67 kilos, that's 31% lighter than its predecessor. Well, I say predecessor, to look at the Crane 4, it doesn't really resemble the Crane 3S at all. It's more like a hybrid of the lightweight Weeble 3S, but with the rugged power of the Crane lineup. Capable of carrying a full frame mirrorless camera with a decent sized cinema lens, maybe a field monitor, and perhaps a shotgun microphone. With the option to attach follow focus motors and a video transmitter underneath. This lightweight gimbal is designed for professional filmmakers with powerful axis motors, but without the cumbersome heavy designs of other models on the market today. And some of the big selling features on the Crane 4 are pretty impressive. So let's dive in and break it down. Right, let's take a look to see what's inside the box, which is ooh, very nice, by the way. What have we got here? We don't need that. The gimbal itself, which is all locked into place. I can only assume that this has is the battery on the base. We've got the mini tripod, which screws into the bottom. And that all comes out like that. We've got the sling arm, which is adjustable, really nice and lightweight. That attaches to the base. And we've got a wrist rest, a wrist rest. In the lid, we've got a bag of nuts and bolts and the Allen key. And ooh, this is a nice silicon fill like cover. This is a riser plate for those low profile mirrorless cameras. In here, we've got all of the USB-C cables to attach your cameras and to charge the gimbal. And we've got all of the base plates, lower base plate, upper base plates, and that attaches to the camera. Right, let's see how all of this goes together. So onto the base goes the sling arm. We'll use the Allen key and it just attaches to the side. So there we have the sling arm, which is also adjustable on the side using this little knob. And then we can support the gimbal with both hands here, or of course in that slung over mode with the adjustable handle. On the other side goes the wrist rest and that just screws in again with the Allen key. This is also adjustable with this knob. It goes up and down for your ergonomic needs. Now on each of the axes is a locking mechanism and these lock the gimbal in place for storage, but more importantly, assist you in balancing the gimbal. So let's unlock those and get the gimbal ready to receive a camera. So on the horizontal arm, we have the base plate and that's just slides in there. On top of that goes the upper plate and that just slides in to there, and of course we have this that attaches to the bottom of your camera. Oh, and look what's under here, a nice little magnetic thumb screw. So let's attach this to the camera. And this quick release plate just slides onto the top and locks into place. Then we can balance the tilt axis. So let's just unlock that and we'll slide this along to find balance. And it should just stay in place wherever you leave it. And then you can lock the tilt axis. Let's work on the other one here and we'll just bring that across. It's very heavy to the right and that looks pretty good. Let's lock that one off. And finally the pan. It's a little bit front heavy. Mm -hmm. Done. So once each axis has been balanced correctly, you'll be able to unlock them and then the camera should stay balanced wherever we place it. Perfect balancing. But before you switch her on, you must make sure all of those locks are unlocked because you could wear out the motors. So this little button on the side, let's press that for two seconds and it should find its default position. Now the first thing we should do when attaching any new payload to the gimbal, whether it's attaching a new lens to the camera or adding a microphone, we should do what's called an auto calibration. And we can do that by going into settings and auto calibration and we'll click start calibration and it performs a series of shudder tests on all of the axes <laughs> and this will adjust the torque on the axis motors according to the weight of your payload.
So let's take a look around and see what we have. On the gimbal base, we have the USB-C port. This is used to perform firmware updates and of course charge the gimbal. Charging time takes an hour 50 from scratch, but gives us an incredible 12 hour runtime with a full battery. Moving up the handle, we have a customizable control wheel or dial and a multifunction trigger, which we'll delve into shortly. Next to the power button is the fill light control for the new 10 watt LED fill light on the front of the gimbal. This is another upgrade over the previous 3S model. It gives us 3200 lux in a range from 2700 Kelvin up to 5500 daylight balanced. And we can control the light by long pressing to activate it. A single press displays the power outputs which can be set in 10% increments or another single press which is to color temperature. This is a really useful feature for interview style filming and the diffuser that comes supplied in the box just adds that touch of softness. One second to switch off. So moving around to the back of the gimbal, we have this incredible color touch screen, uh, which is where we set all of the parameters of the gimbal. Uh, we'll take a good look at that in just a second. Next to that, we have the joystick, which controls added movement to the gimbal itself. This is sensitive to smaller inputs or quicker movement, depending on how aggressive you are with it. Oh, hello. So next to the joystick is the mode switch. This allows us to quickly swap between shooting modes with a single press. Either pan follow, lock, or follow modes. Double click gives us the remaining shooting modes of POV, vortex, or portrait. A long press will send the gimbal into sleep mode, which will turn off all of the axis motors but obviously keep on the gimbal and save the battery. And finally, we have the photo video button, which is this red one here. That allows us to control the camera remotely, either with a USB-C cable or via Bluetooth. I'll show you how that works also. Now you probably noticed these pretty white lights dotted all around the gimbal. Now these aren't decorative, although they are a bit. They're actually warning lights for the axis motors. Um, if they're white, then this signifies that the motor is balanced correctly. If they turn red, then it's a warning to the operator that they need to be adjusted. Pretty neat. And that's pretty much it. Very simple, very ergonomically friendly. Let's take a look at this touch screen. Now the touch screen has four simple screens. The mode option, which gives us all of the standard shooting scenarios. Pan follow, which is my preferred choice. This cancels out the tilt axis to keep the horizon level. Lock mode will keep the camera pointed at whatever you're filming, so no panning left or right. Follow mode, which is a firm favorite for most videographers, which allows full movement apart from the roll axis. If you do want roll, then POV will give us full movement with a nice smooth action. The go mode is very similar to pan follow with just quicker response movements if you're filming fast action movie scenes. Vortex, this is a cool feature. It rotates the camera skywards by 90 degrees and allows you to use the joystick to rotate your footage. Most of the time you'll want to extend the sling arm in this mode to balance out the gimbal and take some of the strain off of your wrists. And finally we have portrait mode, which turns the camera upright on its side and then we can sling the gimbal to get those social media type captures. There is, however, a better way to get portrait captures and that's because this gimbal has native portrait shooting. This is a physical upgrade over the previous 3S model. The entire mount slides off of the horizontal arm and onto the vertical one. How cool is that? You will have to rebalance the roll axis at the back because the payload will have shifted, but this allows us to shoot properly in the portrait aspect ratio without having to sling it over like the previous version. Now, I said a moment ago that my preferred shooting mode is pan follow, which is great, but what about if you need to adjust the tilt action of the gimbal? Well, on the front of the handle here is this customizable control wheel, which we can assign too many things, one of which is the tilt action. So let's head into settings and let's scroll up to control wheel. And I have mine set to the X axis, um, which obviously controls the tilt. But if we prefer, we can actually choose roll instead. And that's how we change the customizable control wheel. Or we can assign the dial to take control of the camera itself using the Bluetooth connection. Uh, we can change the aperture, the shutter, or the ISO remotely. So let's see how we do that. Well, our first option is to use the USB cables provided in the case. And let's plug it into the transmission control port on the side. 
and hook up the camera and switch her on. You'll have to accept PC remote connection. If you don't see this message, you'll probably have to go into menu, network and check your settings. Obviously this will depend on your make and model of camera. You'll see on the touch screen of the gimbal a little camera symbol to indicate we're now connected remotely. And now using the photo video button, this will work in much the same way as your actual camera shutter button. Half press will engage focusing and full press will begin recording. And again, should you want to customize the control wheel to changing the camera's exposure settings during filming, we can do that. Go into settings and ooh, let's change it to control the ISO and boom, now we have remote control over your exposure on the fly. Very handy in the field. So how do we connect via the upgraded Bluetooth feature? Simple, head into settings, then you'll want to access the Bluetooth settings on the camera menu and go into pairing. Allow pairing with the Crane 4 and click OK. And two seconds later, we are connected. The Sony will be registered into the Bluetooth memory on the gimbal, so every time we switch both the camera and the gimbal on, they will connect automatically as indicated by the little antenna symbol on the touchscreen. Now, not forgetting, we can also customize the front trigger to a filming mode. I have mine set to pan follow as default, but should I be filming in, say, point of view, I can quickly get back to pan follow with one click of the trigger. And there we are. A double click on the trigger is set to smoothly recenter the gimbal back to its default position. A triple click enters selfie mode for those talking head style shots. And of course, we have the fill light for such scenarios. So what else do we have in settings? Let's look at parameter settings. We have motor torque. I keep mine at medium as I do with the smoothness. Joystick speed, I have mine set to quick, although remember it is touch sensitive, so you can still do small inputs for cinematic shots, but now we can get into position quicker should we need to. If you prefer you have access to a virtual joystick within the ZY Play app, you'll be able to control the gimbal from afar using Bluetooth. You can even use the built-in gyro within your smartphone to move the gimbal. It's a bit gimmicky, but kind of fun. Inside settings, you'll also have access to advanced features for creative filming like pano, motion lapse, and my favorite, time lapse, which when connected via Bluetooth, it takes control of your shutter to take individual images. You can set the gimbal's start and end point to create interesting time lapses. Well, what can I say about the Crane 4? It's a serious piece of kit, extremely well built with professional features and reassuringly strong for its size. It's easily the best gimbal that I've ever used and it might just be the best gimbal on the market today for the money and its size. When you're shooting content, you want something reliable and lightweight so you don't get too fatigued on a shoot. The Crane 4 has been constructed and designed from years of experience and feedback from users like you and I. The previous Crane 3S was very popular, yes, and an undoubted powerhouse gimbal capable of carrying that 6.5 kilograms of weight. But in reality, a heavy gimbal with that much weight attached simply isn't sustainable. What content creators actually want are smaller, lightweight gimbals with powerful axis motors that are capable of carrying those modern mirrorless cameras with the cinema lenses. Well, the Crane 4 is that gimbal. Anyway, I hope that's given you a little insight into how good this company is and the products they produce. Thanks for watching. I've got a new photography course coming out soon. So if you're interested in improving your portrait headshot photography skills, then this is the course for you. I've also got Lightroom preset pack available on the website. All of the links are in the description. I'll catch you next time.